Who is Julia? What? She's more important than my son's birthday, right? Oh, I've never been taken to such a fancy hotel. You got it all wrong, don't you? Are you trying to play me for a fool? I will tell you the rest of the scary story. A true horror story. My name is Hana. I'm 43 years old, a part-time housewife. My family consists of my son, Robbie, who will graduate from elementary school this year, and my husband, Ian, who is a commercial food salesman. What's going on? I told you three months ago. Today is Robbie's birthday, and we are going to celebrate it as a family. I've already prepared Robbie's favorite beef stew and fried chicken, and now you are suddenly on a business trip. Robbie is going to be a middle school student next year, and he will be busy with his school activities, so we won't have time to spend time together as a family. Moreover, he is of the age when kids start to rebel. I may not be able to cook for my son's request and celebrate with the whole family anymore. It's been 12 years since my husband and I have become parents. My husband wanted a drink, so I went all out and got him a bottle of champagne. And now he's suddenly going on a business trip. I told you I'm sorry. I'm not going there because I want to. It's my job. I can't forgive my husband for making a face that said he's really annoyed with me, even though he's apologizing. If you're a father, you should put your family first. I'm a father. I work for the sake of our family. I know that, but you have to keep your word. Isn't that what a man is supposed to do? You should consider my situation. A husband's job and his position is important to our family. I understand that, but I know. I can't stand your attitude that I have to put up with you. Am I the only one who cares about our son's birthday? My husband says this to me with a frustrated look on his face. Okay, I will be home early. I will get someone to take over and we'll switch shift. I will be home in time for dinner. Are you sure? Yeah, I will do my best because it's Robbie's birthday. Thanks. I'm really glad you understand. I'm sure Robbie would be happy. Today's birthday party was going to be unforgettable. I thought it would be, but my hopes were dashed. That evening, I received a message from my husband that made me sigh. I can't make it. I won't be going home today. I was looking forward to it. Oh my god. What about the champagne you and I were supposed to drink together? Give me a break. They can't replace me in my line of work. What? You can't replace a husband or a father either, though. I was disappointed, and my son came up to me. Are you all right, Mom? Robbie, I'm sorry. Dad said he had to work. I know. I don't care. You don't have to be depressed. I thought he was just a kid, but he's so thoughtful. Unlike my husband, he's grown up to be a kind man. I know. Work is important. And sometimes you have to prioritize it. We can't make a living. If we only put our family first, I've been selfish. I'm sorry. I'm sure my husband works hard and puts up with a lot. Let's put the food in the fridge for now and eat it when dad's around. What? But that's what you wanted to eat today. It's too much for just the two of us. You don't want to prepare it and then have to clean up the leftovers, right? Yeah, I will apologize to that later, but let's go to your favorite restaurant, Mom. I want to go to a nice restaurant. I really love my son. Robbie, thank you. I will make a reservation at the place you've always wanted to go, so I called another restaurant at the fancy hotel. It's a famous hotel used for weddings and special events. Despite the short notice, they welcomed me with open arms when I told them it was my son's birthday. Robbie, they said they can prepare a small course for children. Don't do that. I can eat the same amount as you. Like a full course meal? I'm sure I can handle it. But just tell me the order of the silverware. I make an okay with my fingers for my shy son. I feel sorry for him because my husband had to go to work. 
But let's make today a happy day, shall we? After getting dressed, my son and I headed to a fancy restaurant we had reserved. To tell the truth, I'm a little nervous too. Have we ever taken the time to eat out in a relaxed way since the birth of our child? I tried to take my son's likes and dislikes into consideration. Adjusted the amount of food for myself so that I could eat as much as I could, and ordered food that would be safe even if it got cold. I miss those days. It's a good memory now. The restaurant we arrived at was spacious and stylish. The night view from the window was the main selling point of the restaurant. But since we were in a hurry, our seats were near the wall near the entrance. My son, who was seated in a luxurious looking chair, looked restless. While I was smiling at him, I saw the figure of someone that I had seen before. Hmm, looks like my husband. No, 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 no way. I thought I might have seen it wrong because we were sitting far away from the window. But, but when I saw his profile, I was sure. It's my husband. He said he was on an urgent business trip despite his son's birthday today, which made my blood run cold. Why would my husband be here? And who was that young woman who was sitting with him? Hey, Robbie, it's bad manners to slump on your chair in a place like this. Sit up straight. Okay, I can't let my son be sad on his birthday, so he must not know. But why? Why? I want to ask him right now. He's on a business trip. He's having an affair. He's having dinner with a young woman in a fancy hotel restaurant. Mom? What is it, Robbie? What's wrong? Are you okay? I'm sorry, I guess I was just a little nervous. Yeah? Me too. I'm looking forward to the Foucault's. I'm looking forward to the Foucault's too. I put on a big smile and tried to enjoy the Foucault's meal, even though it was tasteless to me. Many times, I see the profile of the husband, laughing happily, holding the woman's hand, touching her hair. I hope he doesn't notice me, and I'm angry why I'm so frightened. I'm full. That was so delicious. Yes, it was. Good. Sorry about your dad, but you had a great birthday, right? I could only nod to his smiling face. You lied to me about going out, Ian. Do you have a woman who comes before your family? Since when? I swallowed my doubts, paid the bill and ran out of the restaurant. Mom, look out! I bumped into someone and fell on my butt. I feel so sad and pathetic that I hit someone and fell down in such a hurry that I couldn't see anything around me. Are you alright? No, I'm sorry for not looking ahead. You were just eating at this restaurant, weren't you? Yeah, I was. The man who bumped into me gave me his business card. Um, it's nothing suspicious. I'm worried about your injury, and I was wondering if I could talk to you. That's too suspicious. Um, um, thank you for your concern. Excuse me. I took his card and left as if to run away. It was my son's birthday. We went to a fancy restaurant, even had a full course meal. I don't know if I've ever had such a bad day. After I came home and my son went to bed, I sat alone in the living room and thought to myself, what am I going to do now? I can't just stay silent. What has he done? He broke a promise, wasted my cooking, lied to me about a business trip, took a stranger to a fancy dinner. I'm so angry. You've got to be kidding me. I will never forgive you. I'm not going to go crying to you. You can't run and hide from me, and I will make sure you won't get away with it. About a month later, I think. I was not feeling well due to stress and lack of sleep, but I tried to live as normally as possible for my son. That day, after dinner, my son said something a little unusual. Mom, I want you to tell me a scary story. A scary story? I have to tell a story for a book club event. Each person has to tell one scary story at a time. 
Yeah, that's it. My husband was playing a video game on his phone, and he butts in our conversation. I know. I used to love it. Scoogle stories were popular. Okay, then tell me a scary story, Dad. What? That's a bit sudden. I can tell you a scary story. It's very, very scary. But will you hear me out? Yes. My son nodded with a twinkle in his eye. I don't want you to lose sleep. How could I? I'm in the sixth grade. I started telling him my favorite scary story. It's about a family in a town. A family of three. An honest dad, a kind mom, and a healthy little boy. They are very close and always together. They always play together and go shopping together. They always eat and sleep together. One day, the three of them went out as usual. Today, they were going to play at the park, eat lunch, go shopping, and come back home. It was supposed to be a fun outing as usual, but the boy noticed something on the way. There were supposed to be three in the family, one more than the other, but there were four, including him. For some reason, mom and dad don't seem to notice. Who are they? Who is the girl with a family of three? Why don't mom and dad notice? The boy asked the girl timidly. Hey, what's your name? Me? My name is Celia. Go! Ah! Oh! My son is looking blankly next to my surprised husband. It's scary, isn't it? No, I wasn't scared. It looked like you were scared. You were scared, Dad. What? Well, because why on earth would you do that? I went to my son, ignoring my husband, who was so wide-eyed with surprise. Robbie, you have school tomorrow, so why don't you take a bath and go to bed? Okay. I asked my husband again after making sure that our son had left the room. So, who is Julia? Julia? She's more important than Robbie's birthday, isn't she? What? Huh? Oh, I've never been taken to a fancy hotel like that. Huh? Huh? What? My pale husband said that in a dazed voice. I don't know what you're talking about. I think you've mistaken me for someone else. I was hoping he'd admit it and apologize, but he couldn't. You're a pathetic man to think you can get away with it when you've been exposed so thoroughly. Listen, there's more to that scary story I told you. What? What? A sequel? Would you like to hear a true horror story? What? The girl named Julia is involved in that family of three, but she has a secret. She's actually engaged to the heir to a big company. They have promised to keep their relationship pure until they get married. But even so, why is that? It seems that Julia is pregnant. That's a lie, right? Julia insists it's her fiancé's child. That's impossible. Since their engagement is still intact, the fiancé's size is trying to get the family and the company involved. They are suing to get a DNA test to identify the father, claiming it's a huge problem. What? My husband looks at me in a cold sweat and a pale face. I didn't know! I didn't know that! What should I do? Help me! Don't touch me! I swat his hand off. Look, I'm sorry. See? We are like the close family in the story, right? Julia is just a girl who had a little fun with. With just a little fun, you would make the girl pregnant? You are not my husband anymore. You are not even family. Don't get jealous, because I'm done with Julia. No, I'm not jealous. He laughed his ugly face off. I wonder what I've ever liked about him. But I'm so disgusted with my husband. Hey. Want to hear the climax of a scary story? You got more? There's more. The end is the best part of a scary story. No, no, no. 
Well, it's a scary story about a family that was supposed to be three but turned into four. But before you knew it, there are actually five of them. Oh? Uh? Oh? Uh? Is this fifth person a friend or foe? He's hiding somewhere. Hiding. Hiding. He's in the family's house. No, no! Are you kidding me? I'm scared! At that moment, the door to the guest room from the living room slammed open. My husband was stunned. Who is this? Good evening. I'm sorry to bother you. I'm Vance, Julia's fiance. I was greeted politely by the man who I bumped into on my way home from a fancy restaurant. Mr. Vance was following his fiance that day after he found out she was cheating on him. He saw his fiance in the restaurant but was hesitant to enter. I was in a hurry and that's when I bumped into him. The next day, my son said to me, You bumped into him, didn't you? I think you should apologize properly. I felt sorry and called him using the number on his business card. Mr. Vance was glad to hear from me. I'm sorry to tell you, but my fiancé was inside having dinner with another man. He told me what had happened and asked if I could talk to him, if I had seen anything. We connected and I apologized. I apologized for the things my husband had done. Mr. Vance did not blame me and suggested that we settle the matter together as victims. No, 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 that's crazy. You came into my house. I'm sorry I came in here unannounced, but it's nothing compared to what you did. I... I asked him to come over. He was going to help me if you got violent or if Julia came out and caused trouble. Wait, wait, calm down. I don't believe you about the fiancé. And I don't believe you about the pregnancy. Hannah, don't fall for it. You're still running away. Maybe we should ask her. Mr. Vance turns on the speaker function on his phone and makes a call. The person on the screen is Julia, of course. Hello? Julia, it's me. Vance, what's going on? I need to check something. What is it? Julia. You are cheating on me, aren't you? What's going on all of a sudden? There's no way, right? That's terrible. Coming from you, my fiancé. And you're pregnant. I'm not! Of course not! My parents heard it from your mother. Don't talk nonsense! Damn it, Mom! Are you serious about him? No way! I'm your fiancé! This is your child! That's impossible. No, this child is yours. Have you forgotten? She scares me. Scarier than all my horror stories. So, I'm the baby's father and no one else. That's what you have been saying all along. I know they can find out who the father is when you're pregnant. Mr. Vance, are you doubting me? That's terrible. We haven't done anything. The husband was listening but he couldn't take it anymore. He interrupted their conversations. Julia, is it mine? What? Why are you there? Is it mine? Or is there another guy? No, no! You're the only other guy I'm seeing right now! Oh, now we know. Oh, Vance, let's talk about it! Talk to your parents and your lawyer. Bye, Julia. After hanging up the phone, Mr. Vance faced my husband and looked a little happy for some reason. You will receive a letter from the lawyer about the fee for ruining the engagement. Also, our company will contact your company to suspend business. What? Suspension of business? Thank you for your long business with us. Oh, uh, who, who are you? Without answering my husband's question, Mr. Vance finally said with a smile, I'm so glad I didn't marry a cheating woman. You, Julia, and the child can be a happy family of three. I hope you have a long and happy life together. Well, that's the end of the scary story. My husband insisted, 
But our divorce was finally finalized when my son was putting on his middle school uniform. With the lump sum alimony we received, we rented an apartment and started a new life. My son joined the soccer team. He comes home every day covered in mud, so it's hard to do laundry. My ex-husband, who has lost a big business deal and is a bit of a prior at work, regularly sends me messages of regret. He is constantly complaining about Julia, who is a luxury seeker, who is spending too much money, not taking care of their kids and so on. And he misses Robbie. I blocked him because I was depressed with his invitation to get back together, saying, You're the only one for me after all. Hana, would you like me to play with Robbie? Since then, Mr. Vance has come to visit me from time to time. He's kind and reliable, and I'm grateful that Robbie likes him. I'd like to live in peace with Robbie for a while. Hana, why don't the three of us have dinner at that restaurant? Let's replace those bad memories. I'm going to savor and enjoy the full course meal that I wasn't able to enjoy last time.